My name is Jason Samard, and I am the founder of Sims Coaching Systems. I'm here with my co-founder, Joe Moretti, and we're here on the Seven Figure Real Estate Podcast, the podcast you didn't know you even needed. Everyone, get your notepads out. Let's go. We're going to bring you value week over week, and we're actually going to be a lot of fun, and we hope to make you laugh out loud. Subscribe to our channel. Check the content out. If you're looking to take this to a whole nother level, we got you covered. All right, we're back. Joe Moretti, good to back see you, my again. friend. Always a pleasure. 2023, big 2023, year. 2023, big year. Opportunity is everywhere. Guys, I got a little bone to pick with Joe Moretti today. Oh, I man. literally just sat here, and for half an hour over a lunch break, I had to watch this guy take a sandpaper pad to his jeans. And then he had the nerve. He's like, hey, have you ever done that before? I'm like, no, no, I've never done that before. And in fact, I don't know anybody who brings sandpaper okay. to their jeans. So Joe, okay. what is going on here? All right. So there's certain things in life that I'm really passionate about. I, I love denim. I will admit that I, I like denim. So I like wearing Japanese denim. And my favorite denim is uh, by a company It's uh, in Montreal called Naked and Famous. They do Japanese selvedged, like hand indigo dyed, imported from Japan denim. Now, one pair lasts you probably, like it'll last like 10 years. So I, I kind of hit like this stall out in the aging process of my jeans. So once I, this is like my third or fourth pair. So once I hit a stall out, I take a, like a sanding block and then you just touch like the, the whiskers like on the front and then underneath the back of the legs, hit the knees and the pockets and then where you'd keep your wallet and your phone. Like it's, you know, and you're also going to dog me and you've dogged me before because I also don't wash my pants. You've never washed these pants, have you? Uh, in the seven years I've had them, I've probably washed them maybe like maybe 10 times. Maybe. Maybe. I was going to talk to you about that. <laughs> you so, might need to take more than just a Brillo pad or whatever the whatever the <laughs> fuck that is. I don't know. Anyways, so, I'm sitting here thinking about world problems. I'm thinking about opportunities, how to scale companies and, and how to make sure 21 livelihoods are taken care of. And this guy is sitting here, my right hand man, with a frickin' Brillo pad to his jeans yeah. for half an hour, just mind-numbingly doing it over but and over. But here's the thing. You don't know. Hey, still waters run deep. You don't know oh, what was going through my mind while I was sanding those jeans. Yeah, well, You don't know. Now you know what was going through my and mind. And hey, in the words of the <laughs> warrior poet, Kanye West, I guess we'll never know. Look, 2023... Big year opportunity is here. It's gonna be it's gonna be bloody. It's gonna be messy. We're in, so. in for a deep recession. But then when you think about it optimistically, this is exactly what you want to capitalize on. This is where you want to make moves. And so what I wanted to talk today about is moving from a unconsciously competent state, which means you aren't a hundred percent sure how successful you've been and like how you did it. You just know that you have maybe good people skills, good communication skills. And I wanna move you guys into the comp conscious competent realm which means you know exactly how you're being successful you know exactly what you're doing on a daily basis and so i wanted to talk about some of the key principles that have helped guide me in my career in my life and that have helped me in business so number one in order to become consciously competent you need to know exactly step by step systematically how you're achieving the results that you're getting and you need to be able to demonstrate that over and over and over I'll give you an example, Joe. If you were my surgeon, okay, and I have this Achilles problem. Apparently, I have Achilles tendonitis. Getting old, man. Getting old. Yeah, almost 40. Say, so, Let's just say that you were my surgeon and you had to repair my Achilles tendon. And you said to me, you said, you know what, Jason? I'm going to try a new surgery today. I've never actually done this before. I'm going to try something new. I could tell you right now that I would look you in the eye and I would say, Joe, you're not performing surgery on me today. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be going somewhere else, Okay. Now, the thing is, if you said to me, you know what, Jason, I've done this surgery 1,500 times. I know exactly step-by-step step the process, exactly you're in great hands. I'm going to take care of you. The level of confidence that you would speak to me in, that you'd communicate to me, would be very different than, oh, I'm trying something new for the first time. I want you guys to think about everything in your business that way. How do you create processes and systems on the phones? How do you create systems and processes when you're working with a buyer? And I'm going to share actually some of my best practices on how to help your buyers take action in 2023 and how you guys can actually get a bigger pipeline and put more deals together because that's really mm -hmm. what we need. You have no urgency being created by the market anymore. The news media isn't talking about how hot the housing market is. It's the opposite. It's inflation. It's interest rates are up. Housing market's going to crash, blah, 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 right? That's what we're hearing. 
So this is where the skills are going to come in. So let's talk buyer process. There's a couple key fundamental things that I think you guys need to know if you want to become successful world-class agents working with buyers and you want to be able to replicate these, these results. Here's some of the key things that you need to do. Number one is you need to understand exactly what it is that your clients need. So that's doing a who, what, where, when, why. And I call this the interview phase of the process. Okay, Get all the information up front. Make sure you ask questions like, hey, Joe, what is it about your current home right now that isn't quite working for you that has you exploring other options? What's changed in your life right now that is has you exploring a move, right? What are the things that you're hoping to gain from a potential move? Tell me about the areas that you're looking for, okay? So this is the advisory approach, open-ended questions that get more information from the clients, which allow you to implement the 80-20 rule where you're doing 20% of the talking and 80% of the listening, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, once you get to a phase where you're getting ready to make a recommendation, you only get there once you know exactly what it is that your clients want, right? Their who, their what, their where, their when, their where, why, their how, okay? And you're always going to ask this question too when you do your recap before you move to this next phase where you're recommending something. Is there anything that I've missed here? Great question because if mm -hmm. I did miss anything, I can go back and we can talk about it. If I, in my recap, realize there's a few things that I'm missing, I can go back and ask a few more questions and fill in the gaps. Now, when I get to the recommendation phase, if I have somebody that tells me that they're six, 12 months out from doing something, I know with my process that that doesn't mean that it's going to take six to 12 months to put these people in their contract. I know that I need to get them out there and actually move them from behind the keyboard to actually taking action. So what I'm going to recommend in this case is what I call the educational tour. Joe, Jen, one of the most important parts of our process is moving you from behind the keyboard to actually looking at homes. The nice thing is we're not going to buy anything on this first educational tour. And I'm going to handpick about five or six properties that I think are in line with what you're telling me you're looking for yeah. in the areas that you want. What I'm hoping that we can gain from this is number one is that you and Jen are going to get some perspective for the market and your budget. And what I'm going to learn from this as well is what you and Jen like and what you don't like. And the, the most important part of this equation too is the fact that, you know, the sooner you do this, the better decision you're going to make, whether it be six months from now, a year from now. Okay. So, so Joe, when's a good time for us to get out and spend a couple hours looking at some property? So I'd look to book the appointment. Now, this is a, a really important next part of your process. And this is where a lot of you are dropping the ball. I want you to then, once you have a commitment and buy yourself a week, five days before the educational tour happens. Then what I want you to do is, by the way, Joe, before we get together next Saturday at three o'clock, I need about a 15, 20 minute meeting with you and Jen and Zoom would be perfectly fine. Do you guys have time later tonight, say around 630? The reason why I want you to do the Zoom meeting, this is your consultation piece, right? There's two things that you're going to get from this, Joe and Jen. Number one is I want to arm you guys with the technology tools that I have so you can handpick some of these properties that we're going to be out looking at. But the second thing that's really important here, Joe and Jen, is I want to also make sure that, you know, I answer all your questions, that I help you guys understand the market. And Jen, because I haven't had a chance to ask her a bunch of questions, I want her to feel included too, Joe. Does that seem fair? Yeah, of course. Perfect. Those are two very, very important steps in the process. Now, in the consultation, things that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to cover the who, what, where, when, why with the other party that I didn't talk to on the phone because I want to build rapport and trust with them. I'm going to take the time to set you guys up on a private client search right? So that I'm setting properties that match your criteria. I'm going to talk about things like deposits. I'm going to talk about the importance of knowing exactly what you guys would be comfortable with payment wise. This is hugely important. And, and, and please understand the way you communicate this is going to come off very different. If I said to you, Joe, well, I don't work with any buyers that are not pre-qualified. That sounds like it's about me and it can come off a little bit like, uh, you know, I'm a bit snooty. Okay. But if I said to you, I said, Joe, it's really important that you know exactly what you'd be comfortable with payment wise so that you know exactly what budget that you'd like to stay within when you're shopping for a home. That's an important part of the process. So who do you work with that you trust 100% will be able to look after your needs when it comes to that? Great question. And if they don't have somebody, hey, Joe, I have somebody that I personally trust 100% that I would recommend. I've done hundreds of transactions with this individual um, and this individual has never let me down, okay? So important that you have those conversations. But the, the two takeaways from today is, are you taking the time to do educational tours with clients where you take all the pressure off and you say, let's go look at some properties and we're not gonna buy anything? 
right? This is like the test drive at the car dealership. It's really important. Get people from behind the keyboard seeing properties in person because properties can catfish you, right? They're oh, designed sure. to like, we're going to show you all the best angles, the best photos online, but it's not quite the same when you see it in person. Probably not much different than the dating world. I haven't dated in a while, but I would assume that there's some catfishing that happens. You know, somebody sends a photo from, you know, 2009 when they're at their peak fitness and 40 pounds later, they look a little different. Um, we've all had those, those pictures, right? So my point that I'm trying to make, though, is get the educational tour. Once you have that hook, what I want you guys to then do is say, by the way, before we get together next Saturday or whatever day you've booked and buy yourself five days, seven days, let's, let's get together. I need about 15 to 20 minutes with you and whoever the other decision maker is. And let's, um, let's get together. And there's two key things that I want you to take away from that, which is I want to make sure that A, that I build the same rapport and trust with the other party, that I build urgency in them knowing exactly what their budget is, arming them with the technology tools, touching on key things like deposits and things like that. Mm -hmm. The science behind this is, is if I get you and your wife, Jen, pre-qualified where you know exactly what you can buy and I have you guys walking through properties that you know you can purchase that are checking off the boxes for what you like, it's human nature to not delay gratification. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to wait six months or a year. If I'm, if you're walking through houses that you and Jen can see yourselves living in and I've done all the work to make it where the next logical step for you now is to put an offer on the property. What do you think is going to happen to your timeline, Joe, your one year oh, timeline? It's, it's going to shrink. It's going to like shrink tenfold, yeah. tenfold. And, and as you start walking through those properties, it, it's no longer a matter of when, of if, sorry, it's when, how fast, because you start going, well, would our bed fit in this corner? Would the nightstand fit here. Where's the couch going to go? So whose room would this be? And you start building that narrative and envisioning and seeing yourself because it's very, going and looking at a house is a very tactile experience, right? Like you can see like the texture of the floors and you can see the garden and you can, you can feel it, touch it, taste it, smell it. It's all right there. And you start putting yourself into that home. And it, you, it, so much is lost when you're trying to do that behind a screen. You just don't get that same feeling like, Usually, like I know with my wife, she could, when we were looking at homes, she could walk in and within 10, five seconds, let's just say 10, but five seconds, she'd be like, no. Yeah. The energy of the home yeah. is a big thing. You know, I, I've heard countless clients say this over the years. And I, I, I think a high percentage of those are, are female. I just think mm -hmm. women have a, a natural instinct. They read energy and rooms and things um, even more perceptively than men do. And I, I've noticed that it's like almost a, a feeling they get. They walk in and immediately the energy of the, the house speaks to them or doesn't. And you can see their body language. Mm -hmm. Watch, pay attention to the body language of your clients. If you're not sitting there blabbing their ears off, which you shouldn't be during a showing, just observe, let them take in the property. What I used to do is I'd go in and I'd say, listen, I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn on the lights for you guys. And then you guys just kind of take in the space, but I'm going to have the lights turned on so that you guys can, can envision it. If you have questions, stop me. And, you know, occasionally I'll point out things that I think are of importance to you, but ultimately I want to let you guys just feel the home and get a sense for it. And if at any point that you're looking at the home, you know that this is definitely not the home for you. We don't have to spend another minute there. Just let me know and I'll put a card down. Okay. And we can just leave and walk out. Okay. People you're, appreciate that. And I'll tell you, you, you touched on something really, really interesting. And I think this is worth noting is the buyer's consultation prior to the exploratory tour. It's so important to explain how you show homes mm. and understand how people like to view homes. Because it's, I see that all the time where people go in and you know some agents want to point out every single thing, whereas the clients just kind of want to get in and take in that energy. So two totally different viewpoints. So make sure, again, prior to that exploratory tour, you're having that buyer's consultation saying, here is my process. Tell me what your standards are inside of that process and then kind of you know, marrying them up. Yeah, I love it. Guys, if you don't have a system and a process on the buy side, we have world-class processes that we've trained to. We have hundreds and hundreds of students that are using these processes with phenomenal, phenomenal results. Um, in fact, we have so many students that are like, this works so well that like I get a lot of clients that end up putting offers after the first exploratory tour. And it's designed to do that. If you do a really good job on the front end and really seek to understand your client's needs and then take the time to carefully handpick the right properties that you feel would match their needs um, and then they get their ducks in a row, you, do, you don't skip any steps here, you get the consultation done, you get them ready to go. It's amazing. Like humans just, again, do not like delayed gratification. Why would I wait six months when I can get what I want now? 
And and for those that maybe take a little bit longer, at least they're developing context for the market. And there's going to be like those houses that stand out. And they there may be that one that got away or that one that they keep an eye on. And all of a sudden the price reductions get it to a point where financially they no longer can resist it and they come off the fence. The point here, guys, is get in front of people in 2023. This is your opportunity to build your value, get people excited. And there's nothing easier than the educational tour. Let's go look at some homes. It's a great way for you to understand the market. I don't care if they have a one-year timeline or two-year timeline because I know that timeline can change, right? The whole saying, buyers are liars. It's not that they're lying. It's just they don't always know how to go from point A to point B. And they don't want to feel rushed. And I never, ever make a client feel rushed. All I do is I just have such a good process that makes it logical and easy for to make decisions. And that's what a good advisor does. Guys, if this is helpful, please comment. I'd love to hear what you took away from today's show, today's podcast. If you've listened to other previous episodes, um, you know we appreciate the uh, the feedback as well. Anything we can do to be better. Um, we run something called the Sims Agent Academy. We're really proud of it. We're going on to our second wave here coming up very, very soon. If you're looking to develop the skills to be a consistent, healthy six-figure agent in your market, Check out our Sims Academy. It is designed specifically to give you the same tools that we use with our own teammates. And our team members, um, every single one of them has earned six figures in their first two years in our company. Uh, We're really proud of that. We have a 97% success rate achieving that as well through the training that we do. And we've brought that to now to our Sims Academy. If you guys are maybe a team leader and you're looking to level up your business, we should talk about our ISA program. We should talk about some of the coaching that we offer, teaching agents like those that are wanting to exit production, how to move their income from being very active to much more passive where they now have leverage helping them create wealth. So um, guys, Sims Coaching Systems, that's who we are. We're very passionate about the industry. We want to make an impact in your life. So please uh, reach out to us if there's anything that we can help you with, if you resonate with any of the content. Joe, I'm going to give you the final word because I kind of blabbed on today. Yeah, Yeah, man. Just taking it all in. Final word. You want to talk about world class? That jacket. There is nothing better than a satin jacket. I have, uh, I got two of them at home, uh, Yankee ones. But from the first time I saw the boys in Two Live Crew rocking Hurricanes jackets, man, I fell in love. So you're repping the jacket hard today, man. Love it. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. Um, have a nice day, everybody. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, check out our next episode coming up soon.